Another positive day on the JSE, Robin. Really continuing a chain that's been going on for the past couple of weeks now. Yes, and the markets have been very strong. If you take a look this morning, I think then the, the Japanese markets were nine consecutive days in a row, and it's the uh, it's the most it's moved in 21 years uh, consecutive win rate. So the markets are looking very strong and trying to pick up any green shoots uh, that are available, and they, the market's really taking positive positive notes rather than seeing the negatives at the moment. And of course, we have seen the the, the JSE crossing back above that 24,000 level. We had the Dow at an eight-month high, the S&P as well, up 11% over the past two weeks. Do you think we're moving too quickly at the moment, and do you think we could be in for a shock? Well, a lot of the markets have are uh, under resistance or have just started a breakthrough resistance. So it's going to be a critical week to see whether these markets can sustain above these uh, these resistance levels, which they've just started to break. So it's going to be quite. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a bulls and bears fight over the next week to see if they can sustain that. If we do sustain uh, these resistance uh, above these resistance levels and break through them, I think it's very positive for the markets. But it's going to be uh, something to watch over the next few days. It'll be interesting what the technical analysts are saying at the moment. Rob, we were chatting earlier, and you said that um, of the 180 three companies on the S&P 500 that have reported so far, 77% of those have been favorable. And of course, we do have another 25 S&P companies reporting this week. But at the same time, we have some key economic data also coming out. Do you think this could be a balancing act uh, this week then? We have to watch closely. Obviously, the companies that are beating estimates, you have to look very closely at the numbers and why are they beating the estimates. A lot of it is because of cost cutting and, and retrenchments, etc. And you have to look at their forward earnings and, and, and can they see themselves making money in the next six months. So even though 77% of them have been uh, favorable, you've got to look very closely at it. And obviously, with all the economic data coming out this week, um, you'll see if that consumer, that American consumer, is starting to recover slightly or not. So watching those closely as well. And of course, just looking at the revenue lines of those companies that have reported, about half of them have reported lower revenue. So do you think these earnings may not be sustainable going forward? Well, that's, that's, that's the burning question, really. Um, you know, they've got uh, profits that are slightly up, but the revenue is just not there. And it's mainly coming from cost cutting. So um, it's really on the American side, is, is that consumer recovering and being able to spend? And it doesn't look like they're recovering that quickly. Um, if we take a look at the UK numbers that came out uh, on Friday, they looked very bad. And they had the sharpest drop in GDP in, in, uh, since uh, numbers started getting taken in 1955. So it just shows you how weak some of the economies are. So uh, it's going to be very close. And, and uh, I don't think that, uh, that, that consumer is really recovering quickly. And that's going to put pressure on revenue. And of course, unemployment also remains a problem and is likely to remain a problem going forward. That's what then Ben Bernanke said last week from the Federal, Federal Reserve. Um, sorry, Stephen, can you repeat that? I so just didn't get that Unemployment is also likely to remain quite a problem going forward, according to the, the Federal Reserve Chairman, Ben Bernanke. Well, that's a problem. We need those unemployment figures to start moving down. Um, they slightly lag the economy generally, the unemployment numbers. Um, but at the moment, that number is increasing and not, uh, and not really coming, coming to the way the levels they need. So uh, unemployment will carry on for the next six months, unemployment increasing. And when that starts to turn and there's a, a big shift in, in the numbers on unemployment and it starts to reduce, uh, that's one of the key factors to look for. Well, just looking at the JSC, above 24,000. Of course, we were below 17,000 at our worst point. So that's, a, that's an incredible gain of 30 to 40 percent. Is there any indication whether, where, where, where that is coming from? Who is who's buying our shares? Is it in institutional investors, international investors? Well, a lot of it is from foreign flows. I think 10 billion rand over the last year has come into our equity funds, which is a very good number. I think the highest, uh, uh, the highest in a long time. Uh, so we have got foreign flows coming through. I think the retail investor and the person in the street is still holding money market um, more than uh, than coming back into the market. Uh, and obviously, when an asset manager, you know, if you if you've bought at the beginning of the year. Um, let's say 100 million rands worth. Uh, it's now worth 130 million rands just by the market moving up, and you're getting fees on that. So there's not a lot of selling coming into the market as uh, these these equity companies and these investors are actually earning good fees off this money. So there's a lack of selling at the moment. When that selling does come into the market, though, would you expect quite a sharp drop? Um, I do think if there's something negative in the market, I think that uh, people want to save that asset base that they've made and keep that asset base. So I think there can be an aggressive sell-off um, to people to, uh, so companies can keep that money uh, and that asset base uh, online. And of course, we are starting to see our results coming through. Now we had results from Anglo Platinum this morning and pretty much as expected, a 95% drop in headline earnings. And that was, that was in line with the guidance they gave a couple of weeks ago. 
I mean, it is in, in line with the guidance. However, if you take a look at that number, I think the earnings per share were 1 69. But within that, uh, they got an uh, insurance claim of 488 million. If you take that insurance claim out, the actual earnings are only 23 cents. Um, so not, which means they virtually made no money for, for, for the quarter. So in line, but uh, in line for the wrong reasons. And of course, we did see their, their share marginally weaker this morning, and it didn't lose when they put out that trading update. So do you think analysts are just taking a much closer look at those numbers today? I think they're going to take a deeper look at the numbers. 51% um, drop in the, the price of the basket of, of, uh, sh uh, of metals. Um, and that was with an 18% uh, weakening of the rand over the time. Uh, since then, the rand has actually strengthened, so that basket uh, is under a lot of pressure, and they need a really strong platinum price with the rand where it is currently. And if the rand stays at these, at these levels, they're going to have a very, very difficult time making money.